Introducing what I like to call the Italian six pack. Where's the bill? No, it's on the bottom of the bowl. It was a great show. Uh, it was a lot of unexpected tricks. I, I enjoyed it. My kids loved it. It was, it was really fun. I've been doing magic about two weeks now. <laughs> I've been doing magic since I was 17. My whole goal is to uh, make people laugh and surprise them. You know, show them something they're not expecting, something they didn't think was possible. <laughs> Just when you think it's over with Frank, Boom, something comes out of nowhere. Again, what I'm about to do is extremely dangerous, and seconds could make a big difference. Three, let's do it. I really wasn't expecting a bit death to my feet. Me neither. It kind of scared me. Most of my things are based on classical magic effects. But I definitely put my own spin on them, my own inter interpretation. Um, so it's not just, here I'm cool, watch this, here I'm cool, watch this. Do you remember your first card? Yes, and it's not the three of clubs you have in your hand, right? If I found and folded her three of clubs with just my teeth, tongue, and lips, I would get a big round of applause. Did I get it? <laughs> I'm a guy who likes to do stupid tricks for clever people. That joke writes itself. <laughs> great audience participation. I would say 75% of the people got up on stage. I mean, this is great for the kids, great for the family. Absolutely, you know, just an incredible show. Baby, 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 baby. Patrick's Day. We have our green sodas. We hope you do too. If you're a green soda drinker, pickies up. Cheerio. It's a way to be uh, classy from what I understand. <laughs> anyway, no new featured member this month. Um, lots of new stuff on the site. Uh, the toolbar that we now have in the bottom of the site. You can do instant translation. I'm actually working on putting all of our books in HTML format. So any of our users can instantly translate it to any language that they want. It's going to take some time, so bear with me. Um, this month we're at Casa de Myers. Ta-da! <laughs> Lovely place. Um, we also have a third guest host, uh, Maximus, but uh, he's being shy at the moment. Perhaps we'll see him later. But uh, anyway, speaking of Winter Carnival of Magic, and speaking of Frank DeVille, and speaking about how he won the close-up competition, that's right, hey. our first featured member here at Magi Book, um, want to run some clips uh, for you guys about the Winter Carnival. 
We've got uh, interviews with Tony Gerard and Lozander that's coming up. And we'll get into our other segments as well as our contest winner and our upcoming contest. Rumor has it there may even be a new Magi V Wife skit. So let's check, <laughs> let's check out some of the Winter Carnival of Magic and then we'll come back and discuss some of it. Camera. Probably will work better that way. Here at the very first day of uh, the Magic Winter Carnival in Pigeon Forge. I'm gonna go to, about to go register um, and uh, check out all the events. So let's switch the camera around, give you a shot of the theater, which I don't even know if you can. I gotta stop at first, I guess. It's a night theater, and we're gonna go see some magicians. So we're at the uh, 2013 Winter Carnival of Magic. With me is Anthony Gerard. Um, I believe this is your first year here. Yep, and, and it was a blast. And you're originally based out of? Uh, well, right now out of Kalamazoo, Michigan. I'm originally from the Netherlands, but I lived here in the States most of my life. I gotcha. And how long have you been doing, or how, how long have you been into magic for? Uh, well, since I was about four years old. So how many years is that? 50, uh, uh, 55 years. I got gotcha. <laughs> so, Aging myself a little bit. I turned 60 this year. And I understand oh. you're here as a dealer this year. Yeah. And uh, you have invented many different effects and moves. And, and how long have you been inventing magic for? Uh, well, my first lecture note came out in 1976. It was Magic Behind Bars. Uh, but a lot of that stuff is stuff that I basically honed while working the nightclub and bar circuit. And that was from about 1969 through, well, I still do it today. And I understand that you're doing a lecture tour on that. Uh, yeah. Uh, actually, I'm doing, I've got seven lectures that I've written since 1976. Magic Behind Bars is the first. I just finished my third European lecture tour in a year and a half. I'm going to be going back again in November and December, but some of the clubs have already seen my first lecture. They are booking me for my second lecture, so that the clubs who didn't see me will see the first lecture. The clubs that have seen me will see the second lecture. And when I come back next year, the clubs who saw the first lecture will see the second. The ones who saw the second will see the third. And the ones that haven't seen me yet will see the first. <laughs> so, seven lectures. I've got seven years before I have to come up with anything new. <laughs> <laughs> but I also understand you have a DVD out that just came oh, out, I believe, yeah. last year. Uh, originally, it was my 1976 lecture notes. But so many people asked me to put it on DVD, I finally caved in and decided to do it. See, personally, I'm a book reader. Uh, I honestly don't think I've ever learned anything on a DVD. I don't watch them. I read books. And that's probably why I waited so long to put Magic Behind Bars on DVD. Because, you know, one thing, I'm very busy. Two, I like reading books. But yeah, it's now available on DVD, and it's a full two hours. I did have to eliminate one section of the DVD. If I hadn't, I would have had to go to a two DVD set, which made it more expensive. But anybody who bought Magic Behind Bars on the DVD, they can email me, and I will actually send them a PDF of all of the material that was missing. Oh and then also for some updates. And how much are you charging for that? It's $30. Okay. And it is, it's a full two hours. Uh, well, one minute of credits, and you're on the credits, by the way, Yay. Uh, but the rest is one hour, 59 minutes of performance, about 20 minutes, 25 minutes of performance, and the rest is the explanation. And, our, and last month on our episode, we got to see you force, uh, I believe, 47 times, a oh, force card yes. on the, the late, great J.C. Wagner. J. I, un I understand that that force is on that DVD. Yeah, in fact, the small video clip is also on the DVD of J.C. Uh, J.C. and I were buddies going back to 1976 when we both worked in New York and Chicago. And he came to one of my lectures a few years ago, and I hit him 47 times with the force card. At one time, he turns to the camera and goes, I hate this guy. <laughs> yes. Uh, but yeah, he finally, at, at the 47th time, he threw his hands up in the air and ran back to the seat. Uh, so yeah, he was, uh, he was a good buddy. Uh, the one thing about the idiosyncratic, which is the feature part of the, uh, the Magic Behind Bars DVD, uh, it is a force that even to a magician feels like an absolute fair choice. Uh, I've performed it for J.C. Wagner. Uh, Gerald Maynard, the, uh, the president of Magic, of France's Magic Society, said, 
If you haven't seen Tony Gerard's idiosyncratic classic course, go see it. You'll think you're hallucinating. <laughs> <laughs> Which I thought, that's great. He allowed me to use it on the uh, the endorsements. As being a victim of that force, I can I can also agree with that. Yeah, but it's nothing that you're going to learn in a day, a week. I mean, four months, six months, a year. Uh, a lot of it just depends on the individual and how many times they have a card selected. You know? Gotcha. Any any um. Extra advice for any of our, the Magi Book community, as as they can. Part of what we're going to be focusing on is, is practicing and how to go about practicing. Yeah, one bit of advice: buy my books. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Absolutely. Uh, if I were to give a person, professional or amateur, a bit of advice, I would say go to the vintage books. Go to the Card Magical Appall, go to Strength on Cards, uh, go to Royal Road to Card Magic, uh, go to Fitzky's Card Expert Entertains, go to the old books. I mean, there's a lot of new stuff out, but now all of the old stuff is new again. Plus, you want to have some roots in your magic, so learn the old stuff first, and then get some of the DVDs and learn from them. Again, personally, I'm a book guy. Give me an old book and I'm at 7 To so build a solid foundation. Yeah. Uh, well, Tony, I appreciate your time and I'll let you get back to your booth. I know that you probably have customers waiting. Oh, yeah. And uh, more cards to force. That's right. Thank you. Well, thank you. Bye. To show you a routine, one of my favorites called the Coins Across. I'm not going to go through the pattern. Let's just do some of the moves. Hope you enjoy. I'm just directly, or well, almost. A little bit of a rub causes one of the coins to go from here to here. Second coin you can here go. That leaves us with two and two. A little rub. That leaves one coin here, three here. Watch the third. Vegas I saw John Cornelius doing the muscle pass. It didn't suit my style. To me it seemed more of a stunt than a magic effect. But I still wanted to play around with it a little bit and this is the move that I came up with. It's a coin production but you use the muscle pass not up and down but horizontally. So let me show you again. Again we won't do the, uh, the explanation. Sure. Start off showing the <laughs> that looked really good. I showed you that before, didn't I? No. Oh. Me... Nope. We don't need an explanation, Tony. We're not giving away. We're not giving away methods on this. Uh, but check the credit store. There's stuff in there. We got the public domain library. Tony's got tons of material out there, including his new DVD. Um, the Magic Behind Bars lecture is 1976 lecture. This is uh, $30 at his website, which we will place somewhere oh, here. Sorry. Oh, okay, thanks. <laughs> He's enjoying uh, St. Patrick's Day. We hope you are as well. Um, anyway, we've got a really quite an exclusive interview here with Lozander. Yes, so we'll start off with an introduction for those of you that don't know him. I can't imagine there are many of you out there. But uh, first his promo video, and then his interview with Magi Book. Yeah, Tony Gerard. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Hi, I'm David Copperfield. Losander is one of the most unique magicians in the world. He created the Losander Floating Table, which changed how people perform levitation in the 21st century. He also created many other new effects that brought magic to a new level of entertainment. His creative thinking refined the art of levitation. And he's a fabulous performer himself. I'm proud to have used some of his magic on my own show.
And then a couple of our members had some questions they submitted, so I thought I'd ask you those as well. Sure. So, with us is the great Lozander, <laughs> and I hope I am pronouncing that correctly. Yeah, Lozander. Okay, yes. excellent, <laughs> excellent. And uh, we all know you as the master of levitation, and. Um, how, is this your first time coming, coming to the Winter Carnival? No, it's my second time. When was your first year? Two years ago. Okay. Yeah. And how is the convention going for it's you? Excellent. This time? Wonderful convention. And you gave a fantastic lecture. It was so so entertaining. Thank you. And very I much. understand a lot of that materials on DVD now. And oh yeah, yeah. I have like this DVD is called Animate Me, and there's basically everything I'm I've done in that lecture on that DVD. And and how much are you charging for that? Just for the DVD 35, if it comes with thread and that paper ball and bubble liquid, then I charge 50 for it. So, okay. And so you, so you can purchase that with all the material yeah. necessary. Yes. And where do we go to get that? Uh, to my website, www.losander.com. And there'll be a link on the bottom. You guys can click on it and go yeah. directly there. Right, right. Um, so we, a couple members had questions. Sure. Um, uh, one of our members, Steve, was asking um, advice on how to go about practicing when you're doing your levitations to not look like you're connected to it, but to give give the whatever you're levitating its own personality, its own. Right, right. right. If you had any ad advice on how to practice that, well, without without any methods. Ba basically, the rule of thumb for that is whenever you move, the object has to stay still, and whenever uh, the object moves, you have to stay still. If you apply both of these uh, ideas, then it becomes a real good levitation. Do you have an internal dialogue going on when you're doing that? Well, at the beginning, when I started, I had something going on, but right now it's, it became part of me. So uh, yes. <laughs> when, I, when I levitate, it's just I simply do it. You know? It is just who you are now. <laughs> yeah. And then um, Nicole wanted to know, out of all the things that you haven't levitated, is there something that you want to levitate? Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> well, no, I, I, I think if I get the right idea one one time, I, I, I work on a certain thing. That's how I created the table, for instance. Uh -huh. And uh, I'm, I'm happy where I'm at. <laughs> yeah, so it's we're happy where you're at, too. Yeah. Um, any advice for any of the practicing magicians out there in our community? Well, I would always try to not chase the next, the next trick. I will try to improve what I already have because, let's face it, before a trick turns into real magic, it takes a long, long time. Yes. And uh, this cannot happen overnight. There are certain ideas what you can apply to make that better. I even created a, a new audiobook, it's called No Tricks, and uh, it helps you developing your material in a way so that the trick uh, develops into real magic, so-called real magic. That's right. And, uh, that's my advice. Just work on what you've got because it takes years and years and years before one trick is really there. So the so the audio book is on the philosophy of creating yeah. real magic. Right, right, right. Yeah. Okay. Well I appreciate your time and I'm going to purchase that audio book right now. <laughs> and you. again, um, we'll have the, the link so everybody can get it. So that was the great Lozander. Hello. It's a toy I bought at uh, the convention. Tried to order one of these at uh, Mad Hatter, they sent it to us, and good old FedEx lost it, but whatever. Dealing with that at a different time. <laughs> <laughs> Did buy a Lozander diary. Um, it's just a beautiful thing. I'm not going to perform it at this time because I haven't practiced enough, and that was one of the things that he talked about. Not chasing after the next trick, because magic shouldn't be a series of tricks. It should be an effect. It should be something greater than just a simple puzzle. And he talks about that in his audiobook, which I did buy, listened to uh, twice so far. Fantastic, great philosophy. <laughs> great philosophy. I always look at, look at him when I screw up as if he's gonna somehow save me, but he is the silent character of I'm this I'm the duo. silent Bob of this uh, duo. Oh, dang it, I just talked. Pan and Teller would be oh, so, no <laughs> so furious with you right now. <laughs> so anyway, that was the great Lozander. And uh, him and Tony both talked about similar things, about really making your magic magical and having roots to it. And, and uh, not all of that was recorded. I've had uh, more lengthy conversations with these gentlemen 
It was a fantastic time. Winter Carnival was so much fun. It was the first magic convention I've ever gone to. I've actually been studying magic for 14 years. It's the first one I ever went to. Huh. I know, right? And uh, <clears throat> it consisted of getting up at 8 in the morning, seeing all these different lectures, all these Good. performances, and then they would kick us out of the theater at about 11 at night. We would all go back to the hotel, we'd hang out in the lounge area, and I was the early bird to leave at 2, 3 in the morning, because most of those guys stayed up till 5 or 6 in the morning, and then started all over again at 8 in the morning. And that's when the real fun happened. A lot of stories, a lot of jokes. Like I said, uh, to you, Frank told me a joke that yeah. hurt my feelings. I just started managing uh, last week. I've been to four conventions already, and this guy's <laughs> been to the first one. That's amazing. I know, right? Who's the better magician, though? <laughs> anyway, one take, one one. Trick question. <laughs> so, um, I guess now it's time for the drawing. We got to do the drawing for the last. Ooh. Yeah. So our last contest was for the Tragic Royalty deck. If we had more than was it nine or ten submissions, ten. Yep. Um, then I was going to throw in the sixty dollar Raider deck as well. So lucky for me, didn't have that many. Get to keep the Raider deck for myself. <laughs> And uh, let's do a drawing. Well, yeah, let's let's pick the winner. So we'll cut to that. Now, I'm using Josh's Ace Authentic cards, which surprisingly are really quite nice. I like them a lot. Where'd you get these guys at? Uh, Target. Five bucks. Hey, uh, we'll take the bleep out of where he got them. If you know who you are, I want to start sponsoring shirt. the show. <laughs> It looks like this. Here's a big one, and then there's another one. There. All right, so <laughs> we're going to take two cards, because there were two submissions, okay? Um, I'm going to take the Ten of Clubs. That represents me. Because I was one of the submissions, and I did a tutorial on uh, my version of the Elmsley count, which you can get for 100 credits. Oh, I missed it. <laughs> and, then, and then our other submission is going to be for uh, the Lord of Illusion, Michael. He submitted a impromptu, pretty much, um, quick shirt change. It was really cool. So he's going to be represented by the Jack of Hearts, because he's the Jack of all trades. Woo! So anyway, <clears throat> Josh, you don't even know where those are. Here, here I'll here. mix them up. Okay, mix them up. Now go ahead, and, and, and uh, when you're done mixing, that'd right. be good. I'm not even looking at it. I'm not, I'm not even going to look at the camera either. Okay. All right, which one do you want? Oh, I'll, I'll pick this one. Okay, so we'll forget about that one. Look who wins me. That's all right. Oh, we're just doing it. We're, we're going to do it. We're going to do it two more times, just like last time. See how this works out. All right. So we'll try it again. Mix them up a little bit for us. Do it. I, don't, I still don't know where they are. Okay, good. All right. Excellent. And done. Which one do you want? You know what? I'll take this one again. This one? We'll forget about that one. I right, win again. We'll try it one more time. This is for the winner. Go. You're not like, going to take my bracelet off. Nope, nope, right? shake it out. Oh. No, nope, I'm not doing any steals. <laughs> Alright, pick one. I'm going to go with this one. Quit picking the same one here. Alright, I'll, I'll pick this one. <laughs> somebody, oh, finally cut, somebody finally caught up. Somebody finally caught up. Was never, I not mixing them up? You did the same one every time. Oh. Three times in a row. That's alright. Because he picked this one, and that is me as well. So it looks like I win the deck, except for the fact that I don't qualify. So, I know I was aiming for the camera, I missed, I hit your TV. Oh my golly. So, the Lord of Illusion, Michael, you win the Tragic Royalty deck. So send me your address, I will send you that deck of cards. Even though you are in England, my friend, I will pay the shipping. <laughs> no problem. But... That yeah. leads us to, we've got the next contest coming up, but first, enjoy a little bit of Magi V Wife. <laughs> Any of you guys that may have watched uh, the streaming TV channel and got, gone to my YouTube channel, there are four previous episodes of Magi V Wife. My personal favorite is all of them, because how can one pick a favorite child? Actually, my favorite is the first one. But anyway! <laughs> <laughs> Look at his socks in the first one. <laughs> Done on purpose. Thought it was hilarious. I doubt it. Magi V Life Round 5, here we go. Yeah.
Hey, Dolly. This is my last endurance stunt that I'm ever going to do, but I look forward to everything. Love you. Sweetie, sweetie, I got some news for you. Oh, what is it? David Blaine is no longer do doing endurance tests. Do you know what that means? Uh, no, what does that mean? That means I can start doing them. There's no one to challenge me. But John, we need you around. And I will be around. Except for those three days I'm living inside that shark. Endurance test 2013. <laughs> that is Mad V wife. Oh. Round five. Round six to come. That's the best one yet. <laughs> <laughs> Round six. Will it have to do with the endurance test? <laughs> Only Josh and I know. My wife may have an in <laughs> She may know as well. <laughs> but anyway, uh, we almost forgot about a, a segment. The Richard Osterland has given us permission to use a segment of his Practical Mental Effects Animans, his DVD series, uh, to kind of discuss or display another reason why the old material is important and still relevant today. So we're going to... Yeah, wow. I know. Oh, and forgot to tell you guys this. Richard himself, who was a member of this site, said that if you have any questions regarding this, feel free to send him a message and he will reply to you. Which is a pretty amazing thing. I mean, this is like the guy in mentalism and the, the, in the States. It's pretty awesome. So let's run that. Go! Theodore Anneman was one of the most enigmatic characters in the history of magic and mentalism, and also one of its most prolific. He was the creator of The Jinx, one of magic's most notable periodicals, and wrote a number of books on various facets of card magic and mentalism. After his death in 1942, at the age of 35, his best work was compiled in a book entitled Practical Mental Effects, published in 1944. But as celebrated as this book remains, are the effects still effective for modern audiences? Yeah, I was just blown away pretty much, and uh, just... I don't know. I'm just amazed, that's all I can say. When he was guessing the words that we put down on the newspaper, I have no idea how he did that. It was pretty uh, intense. Wow is, is, is the first word that comes to mind. I thought Richard was amazing. I pick a line in the newspaper and suddenly he could like read what, the words he was thinking of and that, that, was, that was unbelievable. Welcome to Practical Mental Effects. You know, Anneman's practical mental effects, along with Corinda's 13 steps, are considered to be the foundation of mentalism, and, uh, but they're quite different from each other. Uh, Corinda was, was written much later and was meant to be a sort of primer of mentalism, taking uh, each uh, step, uh, each part of mentalism, first nail riders and then prediction effects and that type of thing. Right. Whereas, Practical mental effects came from a much earlier time. Corinda was like the 50s and the 60s. Whereas practical mental effects uh, came from the Jinx, which was uh, written between 1934 and 1941. And already within the Jinx, these effects had been used for 20 years or so. So these are effects from the turn of the century, from the, you know, from the early teens and the 20s. From working uh, repertoires. Yes, that's the thing. Uh, every one of these effects in, in this book um, were uh, from magicians and mentalists who were doing this stuff for real. That's why this stuff is so important. And uh, unlike Corinda, which was set, he set out to create steps in the study of mentalism, that was not the case here with practical mental effects. This, uh, this com compilation of mental effects from the jinx didn't happen until three years after Anneman passed away. Okay. And when they put them together in practical mental effects, they tried to organize them. Card effects, living and dead tests, and that. but that was never the intent in the first place. Right. The intent was a, a magazine filled with uh, different effects contributed by Anneman and others.
And so when we decided to do this, we talked in great length about this. We said, are we going to take it chapter by chapter like we did with 13 steps? It doesn't make any sense. Right. You know, all we're going to do is wind up having to do 12 living and dead tests in a row or, you know, 12, 12 uh, card effects in a row. Yeah. And, and even uh, in the introduction, you know, he mentions, Crimmins mentions that, you know, he tries his best to put these together in some orderly fashion, but even there, you can't really do that because some effects have, um, have cards that aren't card effects or part of prediction effects and what have you. So we just chose to, to pick a, a montage of effects from different parts of the book and we're going to disperse these over the course of some six DVDs. Yes. And we decided to do it in two, two efforts. This, this first set that you're about to look at um, will consist of the first three DV, DVDs, and then we'll move on to the second set in a very short order. Uh, I also tried to take effects for this first uh, series that are quite easy to make up and do. There's hardly anything in here you have to go out and buy. Right. Everything you can put together at home. And, uh, and I want it to truly be practical for anyone mm -hmm. who, who uh, wants to, to learn these effects. I think it's also important to point out that, like the Corinda Project, uh, in no way are we trying to replace this book. Uh, we, we culled through the material that, uh, like you said, uh, you, you picked some of the, the easier stuff. Um, but uh, we're not taking the, the best stuff. This is not a best of. Uh, we really want to uh, inspire people to, to kind of dig into the book uh, even further because uh, we're just scratching the surface here. There's just untold riches in this book. And even across six DVDs, we won't even have scratched the surface of how, how powerful mm -hmm. and contemporary and how applicable to modern repertoires a lot of this material still is. It is not dated Mm -hmm. in any way and you see that all the time on on magic forums uh, it's not dated material at all my big thing and let me just finish this quick introduction by saying you know my big thing is so much happens with technology these days that more and more people want to attribute any miracle they see to some kind of computer chip or something of that nature the material in here is of the simplest natures papers uh, chalk slates Things that are just so far removed from technology that you can't, you can't imagine uh, how it could be removed further. With everything that goes on, I know I said it before, with everything that goes on today and all the wonders that we see, still to this day no machine, no computer can penetrate into your brain. Yeah. And yet what happens? Somebody like uh, we come along with something so simple as a pencil and a paper and we're able to do that. You see, it's like the anti-technology. And, and it's twice as strong because of that very factor. So we hope you enjoy this series. And, uh, and as Jim said, please understand this is just the beginning for you. Thank you. <laughs> that was Richard Osterlin. Thank you, Mr. Osterlin. Uh, I own a thousand of his DVDs. Uh, the practical mental effects stuff is his latest uh, 66 DVD set. Um, it's fantastic as is, as he mentioned, Corinda's 13 Steps. Um, he also has several books out that you can get. Rumor has it, if you request an autograph on his books, if you order them from him, from him, if you go to a different site, I can't guarantee you this. That's him right now correcting me. <laughs> order from him, ask for an autograph, it may happen. I'll just say that I own, well, here's four books right here. They're all autographed. That's all I'm going to say. I own more than that, but I didn't buy them all from, directly from him. Anyway, next contest we got coming up. Um, let's see. Well, there's a number of things that I want to give away. We got the Ultimate Impromptu Card Magic DVD. Uh, borrow a deck of cards to be able to perform. Big Blind Media. I don't know. Maybe we'll give that away. Perhaps the hot book that you, that's out. Uh, book, you open it up, it goes up in flames. You close it, you open it up, it's a normal book. That's pretty awesome. Mind Control is another fun one. Um, basically, you give a person three options to pick whatever they want. Whatever they pick, you already knew they're going to pick it. Simple. Simple and effective. And then one of my all-time favorites is the Spooky. It's fantastic. I perform this a lot. Uh, it's one of my favorite effects to do. No threads. You're clean. 
If performed correctly, and if you win this, I'll send you a DVD tutorial on how to do it. Um, but this is real magic. I mean, they all are, given on the presentation. So let's figure out what we're giving away. How should we do this? Beep. Okay. <laughs> that means we're going to the die. Where's the yeah. die? Oh, I'm sorry. This is a Tom Mullica DVD. Ooh. He happens to be a member of our site. Oh, my gosh. You know Luna Shimada? Like the famous magician, like super famous, and her dad was a famous magician? Yeah. Also a member of the site. I do know. Oh, so anyway, you Here's got a die on yep. you? Ready? Okay. Oh, I don't have the dice. There's no die there. <laughs> here. No, nope, no die here either, but a couple of books by Harry Lorraine, also a member of the site. You guys uh, should, should contact these people and discuss with them. Oscar Muniz? The greatest child performer alive right now? Magic? Yes. Member of the site! So we're, we're really growing is what I'm saying. I'm tooting my own horn. Sorry about that. What we're going to do, what should the contest be for? Should it be inviting members or should it be hmm. more credit, like credit store contest kind of stuff? Or? Can it be 50-50 or no? Let's see. Yeah, yeah. So every time you invite a member and they list you as a person that sent them, you get a hundred additional credits. Oh, Basically yeah. means that you can purchase anything that you want off the credit store. I mean, it's the quickest way to get a hundred credits. Let's say whoever refers the most people gets their choice of any of these prizes. They get to choose the hot book, the ultimate... Uh, Impro impromptu card magic DVD, mind control, or the spooky. Um, and then we'll say that we'll do again the drawing for people that submit stuff for the credit store. They'll get their pick from what's left. Uh, so we'll put all four of these up and it's up to you what you win. That's my idea. <laughs> Is it? Well, I don't know. Yes, it's his idea. Look up one take wonder over here. Myers Josh. Adam is a friend. Let him know. I'm not going to confirm you either way. <laughs> but anyway, let's end the show, shall we? With uh, some performances from our members. Uh, we always want to feature our members. Let, it, let me know. Not this guy because he won't confirm you as a friend. <laughs> you should though. Well, maybe I will. All right, he'll think about it. Yeah. Uh, but uh, let me know if you want to be a featured member. Uh, the initial idea was to feature the magicians that weren't known but are fantastic. Um, our featured members thus far, we got Johnny Della Rocca. We've got awesome. Frank DeVille. Awesome. And we've got Rui Cruz. Awesome. Awesome. He's fantastic. In fact, there may be more stuff coming up with Mr. Cruz in the future. Uh, got some plans for him. We want him to be a success, as we want all of you to be a success. So let's uh, engage in this community together. And sorry for the ads. I put the ads up there. It's uh, helping with me with some supplemental income, spending a lot of time and energy on the site. And I am not making any money, I guarantee you. I'm spending way more than what I'm getting. So, you know. If you happen to click on any of those, those advertisements, perhaps that'll help the site. Maybe. Uh, also, there's a donation button up there, and I thank you all that have donated thus far, which is no one. So, <laughs> don't worry about it. This is for us. We'll see you next time. Have a safe St. Patrick's Day. One take, one wonder, baby. One take, one, one, take, one wonder. Also still in the credit store, 35 credits. Yeah!